everybody, welcome back to the practice. That time in the middle of the week when we gather together with our identity groups yep. to talk about how we can put into practice those things that we are learning on Sundays. Right. And uh, welcome to our latest living room setup. <laughs> We're just every week going to give you a new go setup. To a new place. Okay? So we, we obviously, I don't know if you know this, but we're in the teen lounge. For yep. those of you that haven't been up here, it's really nice. It we, is. And we hang out here a lot. We played some <laughs> foosball earlier. We used to warm <laughs> ourselves up. <laughs> we did not. And get going through some darts. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're, we're really glad to be with you guys. Yeah. Uh, this last weekend was awesome. Uh, oh, my For those goodness. who were able to go to the marriage retreat, it was wow. phenomenal. And um, just such a great time together. It's such Seriously. a great location. And uh, we just had a blast. And I heard that this weekend, for those who were not at the marriage retreat, that the service here was great. Um, and uh, there's so many good things happened. Um, we've only gotten to listen to like half of it. So, yeah. uh, but the part that we saw already was awesome. So, uh, just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Thank you to Mary for uh, helping to you, run that Mary. service on Sunday and make that happen. And she made it happen. Made it happen. So, that's really cool. So, today um, we wanted to talk about a couple things, but I wanted to let you know. Um, the, about some stuff that's coming up. So this that's coming right. Sunday, um, we are, uh, Trace and I are actually going to be um, kind of sharing with everybody uh, our introduction to the Advent season. Yay! The season of Advent is the four Sundays before Christmas. So it will start on November the 28th. This coming Sunday, the 20th, or November 27th. Whatever, yeah. whatever that Sunday is. <laughs> I uh, don't know. But this Sunday is the 20th, so it must be the 27th. Yeah, yeah. This Sunday is the 20th, and we're, we're going to kind of be talking about the season of Advent and how to prepare yourself for it and how to really uh, get the, the best spiritual lessons out of celebrating that season. Yeah. Now, I know that two weeks ago I told you that I was going to be preaching um, on that first Sunday in November, <laughs> and then I wasn't, so things changed between the time we made the video and we got to Sunday. But, but we uh, promise. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> what we're saying that is at this moment, Please. the plan is uh, for us to be doing the service this Sunday. So we will see how that goes. And yeah. so you can, you can be looking forward to that. Um, but I also wanted to tell you um, about something that is coming up specifically for all of the moms. Um, yes. At the end of January, the last weekend of January, um, Tracy has a mothers in ministry retreat that yes. she's been doing for uh, many years. It's always the last weekend of January. And it is a great time uh, for the moms to be able to have a weekend away to be yeah. able to really focus on the ministry of motherhood and what that means. Yeah. And it is a phenomenal opportunity for the moms. And I really want to encourage the dads. Uh, if you are a dad and your wife has children of any kind, any age, <laughs> um, not just ones that are still in your home, not just ones that are still yeah. in school, it's for moms of any age and even grandmas. Yes. Um, and uh, so it, it is a great opportunity. Um, and so we're actually going to be having it here at the at the building. Um, and so there's a there's a benefit to it being in Orange County, but then there's also sometimes uh, a thought for people who live locally that they're like, oh well, we just you know I live locally, I don't really need to you know to get away. But the best thing for your wife, the best thing for the moms, is to be able to get out of the house and stay at a hotel for the whole weekend, mm -hmm. even though she's right here in Orange County. Um, True. Because, you know, when you come home, there's always stuff to do, and you're just going to jump right into it. And the kids are there. The idea is that uh, we want um, a weekend for God to be able to really speak to the moms and help them, and they need that space and that silence to be able to do it. So yep. I'm asking the dads if you guys can plan right now for that weekend to be a weekend where you will take care of the house and you will take care of the kids and you will send your wife away for the weekend so that she can experience a great time yeah. with God. Um, there's actually, uh, there's moms that are coming in from all over California yeah. and some flying in from other states yeah. to be here for this retreat. It's a, it's a really, really great time. Uh, but I want to encourage the dads to really own this yourself. It's a great Christmas present yeah. even um, that you could do is give give that to your $75 wife. $75 registration. Yep. That's a great present. So the registration's open. Uh, all that is on the weekly wave, but I just wanted to put that plea out there Thank you, for honey. the dads. You're welcome. Yes. So we are really, really dedicated to uh, taking the time in 2023 to help people with their parenting. Yep. So, you know, we just got our first pass at the calendar done. We know what the region is expecting. So now we can now put in our local things. And one of the things that we want to make sure we do is that every quarter 
we have a parenting workshop of some sort mm -hmm. for all of our young parents. Right. So this is going to be one of the themes in 2023 is raising godly children and creating godly homes. Right. And then we're talking about ways even for the, the parents of our uh, elementary school age kids up through you know the junior high and things like that so we've got got some ideas and some plans yeah, that, that, awesome. that we're working on um, and uh, so we're excited about that we're actually really excited about the new year we are feeling yeah, very hopeful it's be awesome feeling very faithful feeling yeah. really excited grateful to be here and to yeah. be doing this with all of you guys mm -hmm. and uh, so thank you for just you know allowing us to be here and be a part of it which is yeah. really great so wanted to follow up a little bit on our, our, our train of thought over the last month or so. Yeah. Um, in our practice videos, what we've been doing is we've really been trying to drill down on um, what this means to live in community and what this means to be a member of this church and be a member of this spiritual family. And so we've been talking about it from different angles. Uh, we talked about it from coming in from the, you know, the, the, the communal aspect on Sunday morning and everybody being on time. Um, and How'd it go this Sunday? I have no idea, but I'm really now. hopeful that this coming Sunday there'll be more Come of on. you uh, actually in your seats at 9.55 ready to go. And, mm -hmm. and then we, we talked about just giving yourself to your, your small group and the, the community that you live with. Um, and then, then we started talking about, uh, about giving and, and you know, having the pure heart when it comes to giving. Yeah. Then I even got more specific last week just talking about tithing and giving here to the local church and if that's something uh, that needed to be examined and you know that, that we needed to talk about. And so you know we're kind of drilling in on, on, on these kind of things. And so today we wanted to talk uh, just about the concept and the idea of serving within the church. Yes, serving. I was just passing that right on ah! over to you. <laughs> I got distracted because it sounded like someone was coming to the door. I know. <laughs> yes, serving. So, you know, we've been talking about, uh, we have our little motto, which is that we love, give, serve, and share. Right. I, I keep practicing that so I can make sure that I get them all. Mm -hmm. And so now we're kind of to this point of serving. And, you know, the reason that we want to go through these things at the end of the year is so you can kind of assess in yourself, in your group. Um, what went well? What didn't? Do we want to change? Is this the time to move to a different group? Is this the time to just change some things in the group that we're in? And hopefully get to the point where we can be really devoted to one another in 2023 right. and even have some sort of ceremony of devotion. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it would That'd look like, cool. but some ceremony of devotion. We're going to play on that. It's going to be awesome. But we want to talk about what it looks like to serve. And there's so many things that we could talk about. I mean, mm -hmm. every, you know, from Mary's words, I am the Lord's servant. Mm -hmm. You know, that from the very beginning, that's one of my favorite lines in the Bible. Um, everything that we do, you know, we're, we can be serving as if we're serving the Lord, right? right. But today I want to specifically talk about what it means to it as far as our South Orange County Church community. Right. <laughs> what about serving here? Mm -hmm. So we want to start with that. We want to first, first start with what does the Bible say? Some reminders of some scriptures about what the Bible says. Right. And uh, obviously, one of the best ones to start with is in Ephesians chapter 2, yeah. verse 10. We've done it many uh, times. Where Paul says, We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Awesome. And it just sets the stage that, that this is a part of uh, like our DNA. Like how God created us was to do good things and to do good works. Um, and so when we think about that in the context of our local church, we look at that and we go, okay, the members of the church, we're all one body, we're all part of one family, and we all come together and we do good works for one another. Yeah. And then together That's we so can cool. do good works for other people as well. But as we're looking within the church, we go, we're, we're, we're going to do some good here. We're going to make this community really run well. You know, within our context, when we go, okay, we meet together at this building three Sundays out of the month. We have our children's ministry that, that is going on. We have the worship ministry. We've got all these different places where we can actually help and do good works to make the whole family operate really well together. Mm. We go on to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 13, and Paul says, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh rather serve one another mm. humbly in love. I just love that because it's this 
completely uh, opposite thought, mm -hmm. right? So no, the goal of life is to be free. Life, liberty, in the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> right. you know, like, that's the goal of life is to be free from expectations from anyone, you know? Right. And that we're just raised on that. That's our. That's the air that we breathe in our country, our yep. great country, really. But it's opposite. It's upside mm -hmm. down from what God is saying here. He's like, no, you you can be free, mm -hmm. but I I want you to choose right. to serve. Your freedom is not about yourself. Your freedom is so that you can give yourself away. So counter and give yourself to others. Yeah. And so when we think about our church, are we willing? to serve one another yeah. humbly in love and go, I, how can I help? Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about this question many times and this is something that we really want to become a part of just the way that we think and the way that we approach things is having that spirit of, hey, how can I help? Mm -hmm. What can I do? Is there anything going on? How do you need me? What can I do? Yeah. You know, we go on to 1 Peter chapter four and I love this whole passage here. Verse eight, he says, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Amen. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Mm -hmm. And each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. And I just love that thought that God has given us his grace in these various forms. And God has blessed us in certain ways. And in those ways that he's blessed us then, he's like, now I want you to use that gift to serve other people. And it's so cool to see the whole church come together, the whole body join together and go, we want to use what we have. We wanna use our specific gifts to be able to help the whole church. Mm -hmm. And so as you're looking and thinking about your life, you're like, okay, then how can I serve others? How can I help? How can I bring the gifts that I have to this church so that the church really runs well? Can I just say that I am very impressed, actually, with so many people and their servants' hearts. Absolutely. I mean, it's I mean, it's so fun, actually. You know, I we've gotten this whole thing organized. You know, somehow God brought it together to where we figured out how to have the children's ministry run, with mm -hmm. basically everybody just serving one time a month. Yeah. I mean, it's really kind of amazing. Yeah. And you know, it's it's easy, kind of easier than ever. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I even want to say that, but it's it's like easier than ever to be able to be a part of something that's going on as each part does its work. Right. Every little part. I feel like I am watching every little ligament mm -hmm. do its work, and it's amazing. And then, I mean, beyond that, there's even people who do stuff every single week. Like right. I know every single Sunday, I'm gonna walk in and I'm gonna see Hank Belady. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna see uh, who, the bells. The bells. Roger so Man. they're gonna be there, and they're always there being ushers. They're always, and I never get the feeling from them that they're like, "Well, when's the rotation over? Or right. When are we gonna be off?" You know, right. I was, they're just always there. Yeah. No one even asked them to do it. Yeah, they just took it upon themselves. Like someone needs to do this. I'm gonna do it, and their yeah. spirit is amazing. Yeah, and of course, while they're doing that, <laughs> then Pam is, you know, always showing up for the for OC kids, even though she only is supposed to serve once a month, but right. she comes every single week because just in case they might need me, you know, I just, that heart, yeah. it, I mean, yeah. this is something we want to imitate. I just love that. And then I always know that upstairs at nine o'clock, the mammoths are going to show up. They're going to open up this teen lounge. Mm -hmm. They're going to, you know, Eric is doing these D groups with these boys who are trying to follow Jesus. And mm -hmm. that's every Sunday at nine o'clock. And there's never a complaint. Right. You know, they keep this thing stocked with, with food, which, which I- Which is really hard. That's really hard. Because right? the teens are like an army oh of locusts. God. They come in here and just wipe everything out within 10 minutes. They're stuffing their pockets. Brooklyn brings stuff home because she wants to eat it tomorrow. I'm like, Some of the boys hey. wear big oversized jackets so they can stuff all the chips and anyway. stuff in there and take it with them. But the mammons are always, I mean, it's just that spirit like, sure, what do we need to do? And right. to and it's every week, and I never get that feeling that they're like grumbling or right. complaining. And right. then of course, you know, the Morrises are showing up with coffee. With the coffee. I don't know where that. that started or how that came. They, they just decided they're gonna do coffee. It's a beautiful thing. And, and <laughs> but, and we were, so we were talking about this earlier today and just what, it's, it is a beautiful spirit that is here in this it church. Is. A yeah. spirit of service. And people who are like, I wanna help 
I want to do something. I love my church and I want to help make it great. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing throughout, you know, throughout the whole church. There's all these opportunities and people love to serve and I just love to watch it. It's so cool. I was at this, uh, I guess it was two Sundays ago, um, just watching everybody in the children's ministry going, getting excited. We're doing our new electronic check-in and they're getting that going and, you know, but, and there's cleaning up and we got this, we got that, and then we're going to make these rooms are going to be better. It's just, there's an energy and a buzz that people have Mm -hmm. of coming in and doing it. And then we have our worship team who, um, who comes every single Sunday and we have rehearsal every Thursday night and then they come every single Sunday and the goal is to get here at eight o'clock. We gotta, I mean, me it's actually, me, me and uh, whoever's playing bass and drums and the sound man, we get here at seven thirty, um, and then all the singers are supposed to show up at eight. And yeah. so, you know, but that just that idea that everybody's coming in every week because we want to get better. And our worship team, I'm just so proud of, of yeah. those guys because, you know, I mean, most of them uh, are with us in this side of life, this half of life, yes. right? Yes. It's not, we, we, we don't have yeah, a worship team full of 20 year olds or teenagers. And so, and so, but I'm doing a lot of teaching and training. Yeah. And when, when you're getting really specific about this is how I want you to sing and, and you need to do that differently and no, not like that, do it like this. That's hard for anybody's pride <laughs> and ego. And, um, but, but our, our, the people in the worship team are so open to great help me. And, and we're really growing and working together. And I'm just, I'm, I just love it. So yeah. we're just, we're really grateful and we see God moving in great ways. Yeah. But we wanted to talk about this because we want this to be kind of a foundational part yeah. of who we are. And I wanted to remind you of that um, and to call that to mind because it's not, maybe, maybe it's not everybody who is in that. And there might be some of you that are watching that are feeling like, yeah, you know what? I haven't been like that, right. but I do want to help and I want right. to grow. And maybe there's something that you can do. You know, just like last week I talked about with the, with the financial giving, with tithing, is there anything that comes up in your heart? Is there any type of bitter root or something that makes you go, ah, I don't like that? In the same way with service. I know that when you've been in the church for 20 years or 30 years, there's a lot of situations that you can remember maybe about service. Baggage. Some that went well, some that didn't go well. And there, there could be baggage with that. But I want you to be honest about what happens in your heart even when you're called to serve or there's an opportunity to serve what comes up within you that might have something to do with something that happened five years ago or Mm -hmm. ten years ago Mm -hmm. and is do you want to be controlled now do you want your emotions and your decisions to be controlled now because of something that happened five or ten years ago Um, or can you choose no I want the scriptures Mm -hmm. to be what guides me and controls me I want the Spirit of God to be what leads me and and really influences the way that I think and the way that I process. Mm -hmm. And so as we're talking about these things, for those of you that are, you know, uh, more seasoned, been around the church for a long time, this is going to be a continual cleaning out of our hearts um, Mm -hmm. as we're examining all these things. You know, we even look at uh, the scripture further on in 1 Peter, where Peter's talking to the shepherds and the elders of the church. And he says, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you were willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve. Eager to serve. That's what I've been seeing. Eager to serve. Yeah. With those people that I mentioned. Right. That's that's exactly what it that what I see is that that eager to serve, and that's so refreshing. It to is. Me. Even in a, we, in our uh, small group leaders meeting, or we have a leadership training workshop every month, and I loved hearing uh, like Ron and Lisa were like. Man, we used to have all these, you know, the, the, the way that our 7-Ups ministry ran when our kids were in it, it was like this and like this, and they're talking to the Bosworths, and we were all together, and, and they were like, man, could, could we talk to the parents, and could we help them with some, you know, yeah. share the, what our season was like when we were there. And there's just that eagerness to say, I, I want to help, and I want to see our church yeah. grow. And, uh, and I love that. And so that, that's what I want to invite all of us mm-hmm. into, is that eagerness to serve. Yeah. And just think, what can I do? to help my church run. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody else who always does an amazing job is Grace and Tony. For sure. <laughs> Actually, right now, they are 
helping to figure out how we can do these decorations for the auditorium. I was exchanging texts with them all weekend, looking right. at their progress because they're always doing something to build up the church. In fact, with Grace, <laughs> she's do, she will get involved in every single project that right. the church has going on. I we've we've even talked about I'm like Grace, you can't do everything. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> You can't do everything, but you know, that's a, what a great problem to have. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's so, Absolutely. and you know, I think also of Therese Franklin, mm -hmm. who's there every single week because she's trying to help us figure out how we can have a, a great volunteer culture. Right. And so she's been our volunteer coordinator and I could not even do Sundays if she wasn't doing it, right. you know, if she wasn't helping. And I will say that this is something that I love about Orange County is mm -hmm. that People are are willing and capable. Yeah. That's the thing. They're talented also. And I just I just want you to know that that's not how it is everywhere. True. And it it's just not. People don't have as much maybe character mm -hmm. or training. Mm -hmm. um, this is a highly trained, highly educated, mm -hmm. highly talented group of people. It makes me, I love working here yeah. because yeah. I just know that I'm not gonna end up doing everything myself. Mm -hmm. If I can just figure out who, can you help me with it? Sometimes I can't figure out who could help with what. So next year we're gonna have a thing about finding our shape. <laughs> yeah. So that we know where what is everybody good at. But like I, you know, I'll ask Angela to do something and I'm picturing her doing this little thing mm -hmm. I asked her to do, but she does this. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, oh wait, I okay, okay, I can't even think anymore because people are so capable. And we're there's overqualified. There, there's so many people that do so much and it's we so true. we may have missed some very obvious examples yeah, of people who were I'm serving, sorry. and it wasn't because we thought through and wrote all these down. This was this is just the stuff that happened to be on our mind today. Yeah. So if if we did not mention you, no. please don't don't. I hate that. I know I do too. It always makes me go, oh, I shouldn't have said anything. But but so I, I might have missed somebody. But it's we not because see. we don't see you, and it's not because we're not grateful. It's just what God allowed. And even if we don't we don't see you, God sees you. God does. Sometimes that's sure. just supposed to be enough. Right. Um, but what I do want you to do in your groups, if there's somebody in your group that serves, is encourage them and yeah. thank them and lift them up uh, for for what they do. Um, and let's make that a part of our DNA and who we are, is not just that we serve, but we also encourage those who serve. And we point out the good. We catch people doing something good and we hey. point it out. So um, in your groups tonight, so here's the things that I kind of want you to talk about, is uh, number one, examining your own heart. Um, I think with all these things, um, purity of heart is my first concern because I want you to be aware of what comes up in your heart when we're talking about serving and is there stuff from the past and da da da. So talk about that if, if anything came up. And then number two, look and see if there's, um, is there a way that maybe you could be serving the church that you are not currently doing that you feel like God is calling you into. Now for those of you that, over, that are overachievers, I'm not asking you to do way more and you know who you are. Stacy Sieber, so you cannot do anything. You are doing enough. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but but is there something maybe that you feel God pulling on your heart yeah. that like uh, I I actually could help with this and that you could step into it? Yeah, jump so, on board. It's fun. This is just going to help us to become more and more of who God wants us to be. So we're really grateful to be here. We're excited about all these things we're talking about. We love you guys very much, and we'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>